Hi everyone, welcome back to Canadian DIY. I'm Jesse, and just recently I ended up building a cabinet for a neighbor of mine. She was actually just here giving Slade some treats, so it was ironic that I happened to be filming this intro literally at the exact same time, but anyway, she had a cabinet that she wanted me to build for, and it was a kind of a combination of a bunch of things. It had to match a couple of pieces that she had had in her family since the 40s. There was an end table and a dresser. She wanted a cabinet that had the same style base as the end table that she had, but she wanted it to be a step back cabinet so it had an upper piece that was narrower and she wanted it to also be a display case so glass sides and door and shelving but it also had to match the same design and color as the other pieces as well as have the old school trim but it had some modern touches as well that she wanted newer knobs uh, same design but just newer as well as soft closed drawers soft closed door things like that so it was a combination of old combination of new brand new design from kind of scratch but mimicking the old stuff so it was a pretty fun piece check it out hope you enjoy it so to get started I had a pine project panel now I started by making the top of the base cabinet here the reason being is she wanted this to be the exact same size as her existing end table so this is where I was going to pull all my measurements from to make the body and frame of the base cabinet itself now we got to start mimicking design elements to copy the end table so the front corners of that guy were rounded. Now I just took a small can of stain and I used the label on that to give me a repeatable rounded corner and I traced that out on each side. Also on the bottom side was a heavy chamfer so I had to repeat that as well. So I put in a big chamfer bit in the router and ran that all the way around. On the body of the frame itself there was also a big piece of rounded trim. So I took a uh, one by one square piece of trim you can buy in the store and I put a half inch round over bit in that and ran it all the way down that piece of trim and then I set it aside for later. Now the antique dresser and end table that I am basing this design off of are a simulated frame and panel and they're made out of pine. So it's exactly what I'm going to do here. I've done this a lot before on my channel so I'm just going to kind of gloss over it but the basic construction is still the same. Pine 2x2s for the legs, 3 quarter inch birch plywood for the side panels, 1x3 pine for the side trim, uh, edge band the bottom side just to hide the naked exposed plywood edge, screw and glue the whole thing together with pocket hole screws and then plug the pocket holes after that. To connect the side panels, I cut out some pine 1x2s. I also cut out an extra piece to make a piece of trim that goes along the bottom front side of this guy. Now I had to use a bunch of things to make all my different radiuses for this, but I pretty much nailed it. Not to, not to shout myself out or anything, but I'm pretty sure everybody's seen one of these pieces of trim on an old piece of furniture before. I also took a router with a rabbiting bit and I made a channel on the inside back corners of the side panels and that will give me a spot for my quarter inch plywood back panel later on. Okay so now attaching the stretchers is pretty simple. Everybody can figure this out. It's just glue and pocket hole screws. But if you notice, one thing I had to pay attention to was the front bottom stretcher I actually put in horizontal and the other three were vertical. Now the reason being is that front bottom one is where that piece of trim is going to go and it's this way on the original piece so I had to make sure I mimic that on this new piece.
Now jumping back to that rounded trim I made earlier, I held it up to the cabinet itself and I made a mark on the trim and that gave me the exact size that I needed so there's no measuring involved. Then once I had it cut to size, I would clamp it in place, make sure all my corners were good and then I had everything glued together for the final time and then I uh, threw some pin nails in it just to make sure it didn't wander off on me while the glue was drying. Now when it comes to the drawers, I've got an entire video already on my channel. It's extremely detailed and it goes into a lot of information about measuring, cutting, sizing, everything you need to know about making some super simple, easy DIY drawers. So if you want to check that video out, I'll have it linked up top as well as down below. Bottom cabinet's done, set that guy to the side for a nap, now we can work on the upper cabinet. Now this one's pretty simple, it's just a whole bunch of frames. So I've got some pine 1x2s here, and the whole thing is going to be joined together with glue and pocket hole screws. I've got two side frames, a front frame, as well as a door frame. The door frame I made sure to make one inch larger in every dimension, that'll give me a half inch overhang all the way around for my front frame. That'll match the hinges that I got. I filled all the pocket hole screw holes, and then I gave everything a good sanding to make sure it's nice and smooth and flush to the touch. From there, I routed a channel with my rabbiting bit on the inside edge of my side frames as well as the door frame that'll hold my glass panel later on. And then I clamped those two pieces together. Now that gives me a wider base for the router to ride on so it doesn't wobble on me. And in a couple passes working down to my final depth, I routed a rabbit on the back side of my side panels to a half of an inch. That gives me enough room to put a half inch back panel in there as opposed to a quarter inch. Gives a lot more structural stability as well as it sounds more substantial if somebody was to knock on it. It's not going to be as flimsy as quarter inch. After squaring up all my corners for my glass panels to sit in, I went ahead and drilled my cabinet hinge hardware on the back side of my door as well as cut out my half inch plywood back panel for the upper cabinet. And then we can move on to assembly of the entire upper cabinet, which is literally just glue, brad nails, and clamps. To finish out the top of the upper cabinet, I did pretty much exactly what I did on the top of the bottom cabinet. Now I took some pine 1x3 trim and I sort of picture framed it out as well as I added a chamfer along the bottom side of the trim to match the tabletop on the bottom. I glued and nailed all this into place and then I added some roundover trim below that again to mimic the bottom side of the base cabinet. Last two things to do before finishing, I went back and I filled in all of my nail holes with wood filler and sanded the entire piece and then I cut out my false drawer fronts out of a pine 1x12. From there I added stain to the entire piece. Now I used a provincial stain from Verithane Ultimate. Uh, the stain matched almost perfectly to her existing pieces which was awesome. And then I gave everything three good coats of a water based clear after that. Everything's good and dry, now I've got the upper cabinet flipped over and that's because I'm going to attach the tabletop from the base cabinet permanently to the upper cabinet. I took some measurements and I drilled a couple holes and then I added some inch and a half long uh, deck screws to hold the top and the cabinet together. And then from there I'm just going to use my typical brackets that I use all the time to attach the tabletop itself to the base cabinet and then nothing will go anywhere. A couple last steps I had to do as well was I had to attach all of my glass holding clips. Um, so those were literally just take some equal measurements around the door and just a couple screws. Attaching the door I used a piece of quarter inch and three quarter inch plywood. That gives me a one inch spacer to lift up and gives me my half inch reveal all the way around from my door.
Now we can start reassembly and just in case you're wondering, yes, the drawers work fine. They're soft close hinges, so you have to kind of snap over top of the soft close mechanism the very first time you install them. I never showed the back panel, it's just literally quarter inch plywood.